Hello. Countdown. Blast off. Laser beams. <whistles> Welcome to the chambers of Judge John Hodgman, where today I am ceding my gavel to your friend and my friend, the esteemed bailiff, Jesse Thorne. Hello, Jesse. Hi, Welcome. John. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Now, before I take this banner off, there's a banner here that says this is a great time to visit MaximumFun.org slash join. Is there ever a bad time? Boy, I guess like uh, during the birthing process. <laughs> right, exactly. Fair um, enough. Is my first thought. Fleeing a bear would be a bad time. I'm mm -hmm. having a hard time thinking of any others, though. So I'm going to say during the birthing process or while fleeing a bear. There's rarely a bad time, but is there ever a best time? Like, if there were a yeah, period Yeah, I mean, I feel like the... The, if I was going to pick one time to be the best time, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now, go to MaximumFun.org slash join. Yeah, I got to I gotta tell you, I'm going to MaximumFun.org right now slash join right now and i have been frankly thrilled and astonished we're about to cross eleven thousand new and upgrading members across the network which was which is really exciting because today's episode of judge john hodgman that just dropped today with a very special guest in the person of greatest podcast guest of all time and super genius uh, and great person, Paul F. Tompkins. In this week's episode, I announced that if we hit 10,000 new and upgrading members within 24 hours of today, Jordan Morris and I are going to eat some really hot cheese on Friday live on, on the stream. This is incredible. These are like ghost pepper cheeses, right? Yeah, these are ghost. We got ghost pepper cheese. We got scorpion pepper cheese. We got Carolina Reaper cheese. It's going to be a, this is going to be a cheese bath, a blood cheese bath. So Car Carolina Reaper cheese, that's a cheese made of a pepper discovered by a woman named Carolina? Uh, I think it's from one of the Carolina states. Got it. Yeah. Anyway, we, fought, we already passed that. We're going to do it. But just because the momentum is high doesn't mean that it's for a time for you to sit back. If you are not yet a member of Maximum Fun, please go to MaximumFun.org slash join. And consider becoming a supporting member because after all we can only do this because of who jesse you i'm touching your nose beep 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 it's a little on the nose we got some wonderful people in the comments jesse we got some people waiting in the waiting room if you have a dispute we are this is open court jesse and i are just going to hang out here and resolve some disputes and jesse i'm going to go ahead and say this time you're the judge Oh. This is a real thrill, John. Uh, sorry, I, I, I didn't realize that our subtitles were on there. That thing that says no, that's just from last night's trivia contest with We Got This. When Jean Grey and I lost, I refused to accept the loss, and I just said no. Let me, let me just put this down here. I don't have a gavel here to use, what are you but I do, do have this oratorial prize. Oh, so. nice. This obviously signifies my gift in the field of oratory. Um, it goes beautifully with this world's best dad silver cup. Wow. That I earned in 2020. Uh, that was uh, given by a jury of my peers, which is to say my mother. Um, so I think I'm pretty well qualified to judge this thing. Absolutely. Uh, Dan McCoy of the Flophouse is in here saying, let's hear some of this judicial wisdom, Jesse. Yeah, Dan. Let's so, hear some of your signature puns. If you have a dispute or a point of etiquette or a philosophical question or a straight up answer question, you know, like well, what, what does Jesse do all day kind of thing? Or me, if you have a question for me. If you, if, or if you just want to make a comment in the form of a question, the classic, classic Comic-Con way. Go to bit.ly slash JJ Thorne. That's Judge J Thorne. JJ Thorne. You see it there in the banner that's going down. Oh, here it goes. Bit.ly slash JJ Thorne. 
We have Jeremy already waiting for us. Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Board IT guy. Well, hello there. How are y'all? Welcome to the feed. Welcome to the court of Judge Jesse Thorne. Thank you for foregrounding your pinky ring. From, from now on, anybody who checks in who's wearing a pinky ring, I'm gonna wa I'm gonna want you to hold that right. Yeah, there we well, go. Well, the good thing this question is actually involving this pinky ring. Uh, let's see it. Let's take a nice look at it, please. Whoa! Looks like a Masonic ring to me. It is. My question is: This was my grandfather's. Oh. Okay. Uh, I have no affiliation with said organization. But to honor him, I wear it. Is that okay? I mean, I think that's going to get you off in court yeah. from time to time. That's uh, going to help you close in business deals. Starting right now, you just got off in the court of Ju Judge Jesse Thorne. Well, Here's to be what... fair, I, I have been proven right in this court once before. Oh, yeah. Tell me. Uh, I was the DM who uh, would not allow the heat metal in in avernus in the D, &D episode keep, with, uh, keep it coming it's coming back to me with, with keep it coming. McElroy. oh yeah okay very good very good you know my players were a bunch of stinkers yeah i definitely rule against your your stinker players they don't have pinky rings jeremy where are you in the world i am in texas where in texas are you uh central texas waco specifically oh have you ever met any of my exes because how many That's, of them live there? A lot of them, right, Jesse? I believe more than one and less than zero. Great. And, Trinity uh, from high school. She lives there. Marissa now, from high school. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind here, Jeremy. You said you live outside of Waco. Or in Waco. Oh, right. But are you, are you in a little town called Squeaky Chair, Texas? <laughs> uh, actually, I currently am. Uh huh. Uh, being an IT guy does not come with WD forty, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you... Working working for public education. There's not a lot of money for unsqueaky chairs. Now, tell me about the ring. This belonged to your dad or your granddad? I this was you. my grandfather's. And what he, do you he... what did, what did you call him when you were growing up? Did you know him? Yeah, Papa Wilbur. Papa Wilbur's ring from Luling, Texas. Oh, and did you ever go to the Masonic Lodge with him? I did not. Um, have you ever been inside of a Masonic Lodge? I have. The Grand Lodge for the entire state is here in town. It's a beautiful architecture. Jeremy, you know that that ring is right in front of your face. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we, there we, we go. Need, we want to see your nice face. Hey, and by the way, everybody, we want to see your nice face too. Come come chat with us. Bit.ly slash JJ Thorne. J-J-T-H-O-R-N, hop in that waiting room. we got a special a surprise guest in the waiting room now. But Jeremy, we're here to talk to you. So Papa Wilbur willed you to this ring, or did you take, take it off his corpse? You stole Sorry. it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, is it really a pinky <laughs> ring if it didn't come from Skullduggery? Uh-huh, uh-huh. How did it come to you? Uh, my mother gave it to me at our last Christmas gathering. Oh, nice. What do you remember about Papa Wilbur the Mason? Uh, well, he was one of the ones who helped raise me, you know, coming from a lower middle class background. Uh -huh. Your parents worked full time. Uh, him and my grandmother ran a thrift store. So I grew up working in the back room of that thrift store, uh, oh. sifting through all sorts of wanted and unwanted detritus. Ooh, what do you re what was one of the top finds? Do you remember anything in particular that you sifted through that? You're like, what is Probably this doing here? Probably my favorite find was a antique fainting sofa. I imagine you, when you say sift through, I imagine you a big box of like old scarves and suits and under the bottom of it, there's an antique fainting sofa. And it's like, what the heck? What, what is this? <laughs> wow. There we go. Here's I don't think my parents will ever forgive me for bringing that one home. I was going to say, my next question was going to be, did you ever find something that you refused to put up for sale because you wanted it? No, I bought that fainting sofa. Would you? What's a fainting sofa go for outside of Waco, Texas and squeaky I, chair, Texas? I paid $20 for it in like 2002. And where is it now? 
Uh, I think with my former roommates in San Antonio, because I gave it to them as penance for having to break lease early oh, and wow. uh, leave. So I was like, here, you have this very nice. Uh, what was their rea- what was their rea- what was their reaction when you said you were breaking your lease? Did they go like this? <laughs> <laughs> they fall down there was surprisingly fans. little fainting. Uh, the, the, the fainting sofa had become more of a, of a dining table at that point. There's not a lot of fainting room on it. Interesting hack, Jeremy. Interesting hack. You know, necessity and whatnot. Have you asked any Masons around Squeaky Chair, Texas or Waco, the greater, greater Waco area? If it's wrong for you to wear that ring. I have not only because... Uh, of being of a secret society nature, they don't, they don't always just go around advertising themselves. Why uh, don't they have the rings? I, good question. You see my eyebrow work here. I mean, do, maybe if I hold it up to a flashlight, does it? Maybe it would create a. Hold on, let's let's see if it makes a signal here. If I just kind of. Oh God, I hear the helicopters. Never mind. <laughs> Has anyone ever commented on the ring and said, uh, that's a nice, that's a nice ring. Why don't you come into this? Uh, why don't you, why don't you come into this basement with me or what, anything like that? Unfortunately not. I keep hoping I, I do a lot of, I'm left-handed, but I do a lot of like right-handed waves to, to try to try to catch some attention, but nothing so far. All right. Judge Jesse, what do you think about this case? I, uh, I am a big jewelry guy myself. I'm actually not wearing any jewelry at the moment, but I'm usually a big jewelry guy. And I think that something, a piece with a family relationship that is that intimate is something that you most certainly could wear. I I would extend that as well to uh, military related stuff. Um, Obviously you wouldn't wear your, uh, your family members, you know, uniform. You wouldn't, wear their stripes uh but if they had a, a ring that they acquired after leaving the service or something like that um that would be something that would be entirely reasonable for you to wear and i don't think that you should feel uncomfortable as though you are you know if you're not a for example a vet of that branch of the service that you should feel like you are stealing valor by wearing your grandfather's ring so uh, my general rule is um if it's not something that could be a trick uh, or if it's something that has a a real intimate family relationship. Um, I know. Yeah. In the chat, minority suspect says you're literally (laughs) grandfathered in. Yeah, Yeah. I agree completely. John, did I ever send you a pair of uh, AOFB cufflinks? I'd always intended to, did I? Uh, I don't know what AOFB is. Okay. Associated order of fine boys. I have a pair for you at the office. It's the ancient order of the froth blowers. Uh, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> this was a fraternal organization in uh, the early nineteen, the early nineteen hundreds in England, uh, that was founded in order to uh, raise money for children's charities, and um, it, it basically all that was required to join was you would send five shillings, which was about uh, 20 bucks, $25, something somewhere in, in that neighborhood. You would get a pair of silver cufflinks and a membership book booklet. And you would also get a card. I'm reading now off of the Wikipedia mm-hmm. that would uh, entitle you to blow froth from mm-hmm. any member's beer and quote occasionally off non-members beer provided they are not looking or are of a peaceful disposition uh their mottos were ale fellow well met and lubrication Uh in moderation Uh uh-huh uh-huh and they met regularly in uh pubs uh and you had to wear the cufflinks always Um, and if you were caught not wearing the cufflinks, the senior blower was asked to give the command, gentlemen, shoot your linen, and everyone would throw (laughs) their handkerchiefs at whoever wasn't wearing them. 
Oh, there should be more secret societies. I am misrepresenting the wrong secret society here. That's 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 what I'm gathering. I like your hat. But, that's so ahead. But I think the the world is full of Masonic stuff because there were a lot more Masons, especially in the early to mid 20th century, than there are now. Uh, I, I, as the bumper sticker says, to be one, ask one. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess the only thing I would add to that, Jeremy, is you might consider becoming a Mason or joining a different fraternal organization. They do a lot of good work. Um, you know, uh, it's uh, uh, it's not all skull and bones, really. There's a lot of excuse me doing stuff for charity. I I, I also would now. encourage you to uh, <laughs> watch the television show Lodge Forty Nine, <laughs> which I is watch. the best. It is sadly sadly canceled, but the absolute best television show loved it i made a very i made a very obscure yale joke because you said the word skull and bones i left the room <laughs> got it when when members of the skull and bones senior secret society of yale hear the word skull and bones they're supposed to leave the room in order to we, protect their identity but it becomes pretty clear who's the member if that happens um a good uc santa cruz joke is um it's sort of a reverse joke. It's where someone brings up frisbee golf and then you don't laugh. <laughs> Seriously. I was not a member of Skull and Bones. I did have someone, a fan, 3D print me this logo of the Secret Society Book and Snake, which is an Ouroboros you know, snake eating its own tail inside of a book. It's it's looks like a really a, dumb snake. Looks like a, a really crack, dumb huh? snake. That's right. It you know like what you're talking about, Jeremy. Jeremy, have we solved your problem for you? You have. I really do appreciate it. Is there any other question you might want to ask me or Jesse before we move on to our next uh, litigant? Mm, I believe I'm good. I appreciate uh, you, you know, taking my question. You know what, Jeremy? I also believe you're good. Thank you, Jeremy. I Thank you. I believe me. in you, Jeremy. We have something. Now get out of here. We have something in the YouTube comments from Mar that says, my wife, and this is... Ooh, we are just going straight into one of the most contentious Judge John Hodgman issues of all time. Do you remember the case where the man let his dog lick the plates before putting them into the dishwasher? I do recall, and I was grossed out by it. Mar says, my wife says it's gross to wash the cat food bowls in the dishwasher. It's not gross. I mean, you might find it gross. I'm not saying that you don't find it gross. I'm not going to deny your wife her feelings about whether it's gross. Uh, and, you know, I I think you should respect your wife's feelings for obvious reasons. You shouldn't be making her feel gross. However, she's wrong. <laughs> that's does that go she for, is dead set wrong. Does that go for both, both kibble and wet food? Is one grosser yes, than the other that's what dishwashers are for that's what they do my mm -hmm. wet food is on my plates and i put them into the dishwasher mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah nothing there's no magic poison inside pets that will kill you through a, the dishwashing cycle i mean look you probably let your dog lick you you probably let your cat lick you why you know there's nothing dangerous inside their salivas Jesse, no. you, you ever eat any dog food? You have a lot of dogs. You I have. Dog I have eaten dog food. Absolutely. What was the dog food you ate? Tell me about it. When I was a child, um, I'm going to say. When I was a child, I ate dog food as a child. <laughs> I think I was about five years old, and uh, we had a very vivid memories of this. My mom's apartment had a sort of a pantry room, mm -hmm. and it had a big red plastic trash can full of kibble for the dog sonoma mm -hmm. the dog and um it had kibble in it big thick this kind you know mm -hmm. big mm -hmm. big chunks mm -hmm. and i remember going in there and eating it on several multiple occasions i've had I a piece not, of cat kibble for sure i didn't like it it wasn't especially good i remember for me it tasted a little I don't know, like sawdusty, I guess, it's kind of the mouth memory that I have of it. But it didn't kill me. It didn't kill me. And arguably, it made me stronger. Hey, we got an update from Mar here. They replied, the CDC replied saying that their coworker came over to ask why they were laughing so hard. 
And then the CDC said it really depends on how hot the dishwasher gets. So they couldn't give a blanket answer. You know what the C look, I'm a big supporter of the CDC. They, they, they came under a lot of fire when they were just trying to do the science as best they could. But in this particular instance, show some courage. Yeah. It's the, it's the CDC, not the CYA. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, it stands for yeah. cover your ass. Yeah. Do better CDC. I mean, if there, continue doing great work. Thanks for saving us. If there is a disease vector that is so powerful that from your dog's food, it will then stay alive on the bowl, then survive the dishwasher, then survive being left in the cabinet, yeah. then poison your food and make you ill. Yeah. The issue here is that you may be giving your pet the wrong food. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. It's possible that you're giving your pet the wrong food. Check out this zinger from Alex Schmidt of Secretly Incredibly Fascinating. Oh, More Schmitty. like Center for Dishwasher Confusion. Unbelievable. But what about this? I put my kids, and this is a swear word, shitty clothes in the washer, and I never thought twice. Not the dishwasher, I hope. Not the dishwasher, I hope. Allowing pets to lick us but not wanting to do the dishes in the dishwasher. It's not like, it's like not liking to find hairs in inopportune places, even though we're fine, when they're still on the loved one's heads. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, the problem isn't that the that the dishes are tainted. The problem is that your Mars spouse's mind is tainted because they know that it's in there and their mind feels infected by something, by a bad feeling. But there is no actual bad feeling. Yeah, you gotta squeeze those mind grapes. Gotta squeeze the mind grapes. Hey, we've got another, we've got someone walking around in the world. Let's talk to Connie. Hey, Connie, welcome to the hey. courtroom of Judge Jesse Thorne. Thank you very much. You. Connie is walking cute pups right now. Connie, yes. you know, get your pets is tomorrow. This is the court of Judge Jesse. Th oh, never mind. Oh, Why should wow. I even talk? <laughs> Hold on. Look at these guys. Solo layout. Solo layout. Yes. Wowie zowie. <laughs> what are their What are their names? Uh, I guess Chibi and Rico. Say that. Say it again, a little bit louder. Chibi. 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 Miko and Chibi. So nice to see you. Uh, welcome. Where are you in this world? <laughs> I'm on the Central Coast of California. Central Coast of California. Yes, the blue sky. And do you have a dispute or a question for Judge Jesse Thorne or bailiff for a day, Judge, uh, I mean, John Hodgman? I've been trying to think of one. My heart is fluttering, but I love you guys. And I finally became a subscriber and Thank you Thank so you for much. Becoming a member, Connie. You don't need to have a question if you just became a member. I know. Hey, if, look. I mean, absolutely. Jesse Thorne is correct. Like, don't be shy. Plug in bit.ly slash JJ Thorne into your browser, according to the thing down below, and join the conversation. You don't have to have the perfect case. You just have to have, and you don't even have to have two cute dogs. Or a big smiling face in Central California. It's great. We'd love to chat with you. We'd love to say hello. We'd love to say thank you for joining Maximum Fun as a member, Connie, oh my God, by going to MaximumFun.org slash join. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, well, have a good, safe walk out there, okay? Don't walk down the middle of the road. No, no, no. All right. Nice to see you. Oh, oh let's take another look at the let's take another look at the dogs for a second oh my gracious oh, oh i remove sorry hang on hang on we'll, we'll get them back there we are there they are oh hang on goodness. connie hold them still hold them still lock them down lock down those pups oh, oh. <laughs> yes the cuddle puddle. there we go a nice cuddle puddle a nice max fun drive cuddle puddle thank you so much john in the youtube comments asks uh it is settled law that the driver gets to choose the music on a car trip. That said, my wife Judith hates Radiohead, or as she calls this award-winning band, those whiny British wankers, to such an extent that she will reach over anything or anyone and change channels when I'm driving. Yes, even for OK Computer and The Bends. Now, I don't wish to torture my lovely whoa, wife, whoa, whoa. but hang can on, I get a Hang ruling? on a second. Jesse, I'm sorry. John is like spamming the comments with multiple paragraphs. 
that's that that's poor form. But guess what? We have John right here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's John Kavalik. How are you, sir? Friend of the court. I'm fine. How are you? G good. You're coming in hot. Coming in hot. I'm so sorry about this. It's it's Chrome. I'm not used to Chrome at all. Okay. I mean to say that you're coming in loud. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So you can just speak at a normal tone. And I think we'll be, we'll be great. Sounds reasonable. Now, if, if people don't know, John is an incredible uh, cartoonist, the creator of uh, uh, Dork, uh, hang on. Dork Force <laughs> is the podcast. Dork Tower is the cartoon, excuse me. Correct? Yes. That's right. Lives in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, yes. Is a friend, a friend of mine, a friend of the show, one of the people who introduced me to, to the Tornado Steakhouse in Madison, Wisconsin. That's right. Two thumbs up. Fireworks, yep. please. Yep. Yeah, that's right. The steakhouse that we went to five years after the last time you had been to the steakhouse and the way to remember your work. <laughs> uh, it was incredible. A special night. Special night for me. Uh, and I couldn't even order a martini that night. That was the sad part. But the fun part is we're all here together. So, John... Explain to Judge Jesse what's going on here. Okay. Basically, my wife oh, is delightful. What? It's never basically. When they start with basically. It's <laughs> and Get comfortable. The, the settled law being that the driver chooses the music during a car journey. That is true. However, Judith violently hates Radiohead. Oh, and God. will has a very hard time controlling herself from reaching over and turning the stereo off or to a different channel or to a different whatever mm -hmm. when I'm driving, whenever Radiohead comes on. All I'm asking for is a judgment that all she needs to do is ask as we're driving at 70 miles an hour down certain interstates instead of physically leaping over people to get to the radio before another radio headset uh, song comes on. I will gladly turn the channel. I, I understand the kind of pain that she must be in, mm -hmm. having lived through Euro disco myself. Can I ask a clarifying question before we throw this to uh, Judge Jesse? Yes. So Judith is reaching over to manipulate the radio from the back seat, or is she sitting next to you? Normally should be sitting next to me. I would definitely not put it past her to reach from the back seat. Okay. okay. I'm just trying to get the sense of the level of disruption here. Yes. Uh, Judge Jesse, what do you say? Well, I have a sordid history with the great band Radiohead. Uh oh. Um, which is that one of my first experiences as a college radio disc jockey in the what what might be called the second great peak of Radiohead, which is to say, OK, computer had just recently dropped uh, when I was I guess I was probably a sophomore or junior in college. And uh, every white person I knew was obsessed with Radiohead. <laughs> and a, a couple of my friends who were people of color were sort of Radiohead curious. Um, and uh, I went on The Sound of Young America with my friends Jordan and Jean and um, I said that Radiohead sounded like if you spilled a cutlery drawer down the stairs. <laughs> wow. <coughs> wow. And okay. did I mean this? I think you're about to kill John Kavalik here. <laughs> did I mean this to some extent? I mean, I wouldn't necessarily choose to listen to Radiohead, and I had no choice about listening to Radiohead in 2001 or whatever year that was. Yeah. Uh, because of its just sheer ubiquity among my snooty friends, right? <laughs> I was at a college radio station. The people would throw Radiohead at you physically. Um, but, you know, Radiohead sounds pretty. You know, it's nice. Um, I guess it's important, too. I don't know. You ever hear uh, Tom Waits cover of Everything in Its Right Place? Thankfully, no. Um, everything, everything, everything in its right place. Tom 
way it sounds like if you spilled the the drawer from the workbench in the garage down the stairs. <laughs> um, so I I I said this on the sound of Young America, and the fo- the phones were lighting up to the extent they ever did on college radio in Santa Cruz, California, and we were joshing around with them. And then this woman calls and she's just straight up yelling at us. And we're like, what's going on? And she said, my little sister is in tears, you assholes. Whoa. (laughs) So I understand the relationship that Radiohead enthusiasts have with their favorite band. And I've also, I have another data point, which is I've also seen a Radiohead person get very sad when, when David Reese made them cry for liking Radiohead. So. <laughs> I mean, I really wish everyone the best with, uh, with Radiohead. Um, you but know. the dumb, the dumb cough crew wants to know, John, how does your spouse feel, Judith, feel about the greatest band ever, Oasis? Um, it's a blurry question. All right. Goodbye, hey. John. See you later. You know, I didn't fun. like that at all. I didn't um, like that at all. John, I, I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> John, are you? Uh, well, oh, did I, you want him back? No, it's fine. All right. It's fine. He's gone what, now. What were you going to ask? I it sounded like the, the issue here was not that John was unwilling to take it off the stereo, but that his wife couldn't bear to listen to it for long enough to ask him to take it off the stereo. Yeah, um, you got to ask. You got to ask. I, it's, it, I think it's reasonable for John's wife to ask. Yeah. And while ultimately it is John's decision, John is in a, a marriage in a car. Uh, and I think it behooves him to choose one of the many other musical acts that they both like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think the violent opposition is is a bit too much. I, I don't think violence is necessary in this situation. Never, never disturb the driver of a car. Yeah, right. But yeah, you don't have to bait your wife by playing Radiohead. Creep, <laughs> creep. Get it? Here's Lauren. Hi, Lauren. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I looked like maybe you were about to drop off. Maybe take no, a little, I wasn't. <laughs> Hey, people are in the waiting room. I've seen some people in the waiting room come and go, including uh, including L Y. I don't know how to pronounce it. L Y Lee or Lai or something. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, be patient. Hang in there. We'll get to everybody. Don't worry. But now we're talking to Lauren. How are you, Lauren? I'm doing okay this morning. Good. Um, there's construction outside, but that's just how it is at the moment. <laughs> where yep. where are where are you uh, in the um, world? Auckland, New Zealand. <laughs> wow. Auckland, New Zealand. Is that the capital of New Zealand? No, our capital is Wellington, but Auckland is the most populous. I should have gotten that one. Yeah, most populous. And uh, and how how are the flight of the Concord still doing good? How's Brett? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, never mind then. There maybe there's something I don't. I, know. I don't think so. I tried to watch their stuff um, on one of our awful streaming services, and it was like a wow, this is good, I guess, but um. I sure haven't done anything since this. <laughs> Look before you before you pose your question to ju- to Judge Jesse Thorne. I got you need to know that the the compliments are pouring in here in, in the chat. Uh, Lauren's shirt is cool, says Alex Schmidt, and I agree. Uh, minority you. suspect loves the accent, and Stacy says nice headset, Lauren. Thank you all so, so much. That is very sweet. <laughs> it's all love here. So go ahead and pose your questions to bit.ly slash JJ or go ahead and log in and join the conversation at bit.ly slash JJ T-H-O-R-N. But in the meantime, Lauren, you have a question, a query, a, a dispute for Judge Jesse Thorne. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So the Honorable Judge Jesse Thorne, um, sometimes I house sit for my family. And when I do... I sometimes open the fridge and I find um, liter bottles of sauce. And for a long time, my family had a giant, like, liter bottle of sauce shaped like this Mm. of ranch dressing. And it was slimy Mm. and old. Mm. And I was thinking, why does anyone need this much ranch dressing? We're, We're not ranch people. 
And it turns Wait, out they got it from ranchers? Costco. <clears throat> no. <laughs> Wait they a got minute. It from Do you live Costco. in Auckland, New Zealand or Squeaky Chair, Texas? This is not. <laughs> All of these references are feel very USA to me, but I'm glad to hear. Well, that's it. the thing. This is an incursion on glorious New Zealand. Yes. Okay. So this we is have a, a Costco of now. Autonomy. Yeah. Um, my ruling is: you cannot go to Costco and purchase specifically one liter bottle of sauces that will never get used and take up too much room in the fridge, and sit there for months being slimy and untouchable because they've got like accretion around the rim of the sauce lid uh, well there's always going is... to be accretion around the rim of the sauce lid that's just reality that's yes, the reality of sauce leader. Since lauren. lauren what is the native sauce of new zealand what is the sauce that does not feel like a cultural incursion is there like uh are people eating uh brown sauce or something uh we have lots of traditional sauces um Tomato sauce is probably the main sauce. Um, it's sauce. ketchup, but kind of, because ketchup is more sugary, I've been informed. El tomato sauce is, it's tart maybe, but it's not sweet like ketchup. Mm -hmm. So tomato sauce, that is El Nation, that's El Nation sauce. <clears throat> Would Great. you? Do you eat any weird hamburgers, like they, uh, the one that Claudio Doherty told me about in Australia that involves canned pineapple? Uh, I do not partake of those, but they do exist. And honestly, the more common kiwi burger ingredient is beetroot and egg. Um, specifically runny, runny yolk egg. <laughs> runny yolk egg is great. I have no, no problem with runny yolk egg. On pineapple on burger. burger thing isn't, it's not really a thing here. But uh, the a hamburger with a, with an egg it? on it is a cheval. Because it's like riding a horse. There's the egg riding a horse. Anyway, go ahead, Jesse. Sorry. Is this <laughs> a, like a pickled beet? Is this like a sweet pickled beet? No, it's straight from, well, maybe it's, if you're going to get on your burger, it's usually coming from a can. So So it's and just a regular cooked, it's just a, like a regular cooked sliced beet. Like if I went and, and baked up a beet in, in, a, uh, in, a, in a piece of aluminum foil, and then took it out and took the skin off and sliced it, sliced it up and put it on top of a burger. That's that's what it would be. Uh, yes. I love it. Stacy says, <laughs> "What I love that for you." What does it What does it taste like? It tastes like beets. <sighs> yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> what do you think it tastes like? <laughs> I'm, I'm not a fan of it on burger because it stains everything. Lauren, yeah, a, num sure a number does. of people in the chat want to know: Is tomato sauce the main one? <laughs> I would say yes. That or aioli. Aioli okay. is aioli New, is aioli. In New Zealand, we, the tomato sauce is the main one. Yes. All right, I got you. I would say this, Lauren. I have firsthand experience with this. First of all, I'm an American, and I I love ranch as much as any American does. Um, I think ranch is a wonderful condiment. I think it tastes great. I think when Britons complain or make fun of ranch, they're just wrong. Uh, it's the reason that it was invented in like 1975 and then became the most popular sauce in the entire country 10 years later is because it's great. Um, but I think you're right that even a relatively shelf or refrigerator stable sauce if it's going to be in there more than six months or so, uh, at that point, you're headed towards gross. And I understand yeah. also this thing about having giant bottles of condiments in the fridge that are like the size of a bottle of milk. So I'm going to find in your favor. However, I'm going to suggest to your family that they do what I do, which is buy powdered ranch at Costco. Hmm. Because <laughs> powdered ranch sound like is, a bad idea is essentially entirely shelf stable and yeah. you can also doctor it up nicely uh you could probably with... put it in a airtight container and yeah. you can make it even more shelf worthy well in costco the the powdered ranch comes in kegs large beer barrels full of powdered ranch <laughs> oh that's even worse oh, yeah, i hate you gotta that. roll you gotta <laughs> roll them down the hallway 
Lauren, what do they sell at the food court at Costco in New Zealand? I went there once and I was a bit distracted by the feeling of um, absolute evil in the atmosphere. Um, they <laughs> sold like pizza slices, hot dogs. Um, I don't remember if they sold fries. They sold milkshakes um, and I didn't hang around long enough to actually see the whole menu. And again, it was the feeling of evil was so pervasive. We had to leave as quickly as possible. But um, yeah, so hot dogs, pizza, and milkshakes, as far as I could have seen. I can understand that. Speaking as someone who is both a member of R slash Costco, I recently joined R slash Costco on Reddit. <laughs> just, Did they charge you it. to subscribe? That sounds fun. Yeah, and somebody who, as much as I love Costco, I I can go about once a quarter. So when I go to Costco, I end up spending fifteen hundred dollars or something. Oh no! Just, just Is it worth it? <laughs> one of everything. Well, I just don't want to. I like the process of of dealing with the people in the Costco is too much, but buying the stuff at the Costco is a joy. So I love having that much toilet paper. I'm like the guy. I'm like Dieter from Little Dieter Needs to Fly when he lifts up the floor of his kitchen and he shows all the bags of rice because he was kidnapped <laughs> by the kidnapped by the Lao uh, communists and uh, starved almost to death. So he keeps hundreds of pounds of rice under his uh, kitchen floor. That's like me, mm -hmm. uh, but with, I guess, just Ranch like, powder. Um, yeah, I was going to say uh, uh, water filter inserts. <laughs> I don't need a new water filter insert. <laughs> Dishwasher gel packs. Get, well, get Lauren, me. thank you for informing us about all these different foods. I'll tell you, if you're 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 out there in New Zealand, and all your streaming services aren't giving you Flight of the Concords, can I recommend New Zealand rap group Avondale Bowling Club? Avondale Great. Bowling Club. I Great. haven't heard of them, which is probably disappointing, but I will check it's them fine. out. It, they're they're wonderful. It's a j sort of jazz band with uh, fronted by a rapper. It's a very real band, very real rapper. Really like it. Jesse, I, like I just want to and point. Lauren, I want to bring you alert you to this um, incredible zing in the comments that just happened uh -huh. in the chat. Our friend from Reading, England, Llama says, "What do you mix powdered ranch with? Just water? I'm fascinated. This is a genuine question." And Mele Couture says, "I mix it with the trash can." <laughs> I love it. The you thing about powdered ranch works. is you can you can mix in you can de you can decide what you mix in. You can mix in sour cream, mayonnaise, or yogurt, or as you might say, Lauren, perhaps yogurt. What do you say, yogurt or yogurt over there? Yogurt. <laughs> nice. I like New it's, Zealand. It's, it's a nice place here. New Zealand. We just need, we only need more houses, and then we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, well, everyone, that's the way it is everywhere. Thank you very much. Did we really did, bad here? <laughs> did Judge Jesse Thorne resolve your issue? Yes, my issue has been resolved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great Thank to you, see you, Lauren. Jesse. We got Ron here. Here's Ron. You mix it with some. If you got, I got a, I got an herb box. I got fresh chives. You can put some chives in there and some. You know, I can make it with buttermilk or. There's a lot you can do mayo, with some powdered sour ranch cream. with a barrel powdered ranch. A hey, Ron, that. just with the barrel. Yeah. Uh -oh. That's Ron, not, hold on, Ron. I'm Ron, talking to John. Ron's Ron, jumping hold in already. On, John. Hold Sorry, on, John. talking ranch for a second. Hold on, Ron. I'm gonna Have you. you ever had the famous slow cooker roast, the Mississippi pot roast, John? No, I've heard about this, though. Tell, tell, yeah, so tell this us is, all about it. This is a famous roast that you make in the slow cooker. The slow cooker is... I love my slow cooker. I'm, I, I cook. Like Some people who cook are contemptuous of slow cookers, but I love stews and braises. And I love uh, that I can leave the slow cooker running when I'm not in the house. Um, I uh, the the Mississippi roast is essentially um, it's essentially a, a pot roast. Um, you know, whatever your preferred cut of beef is. I mean, you could also use pork. Somebody said that they use chicken. Yeah, that's uh, a uh, multiple me, Judge but... John Hodgman uh, title uh, submit or irony maiden says. Oh, I Mississippi yeah. chicken classic title submitter um so you, you start with that pot roast um you dump a packet of au jus mix a packet of ranch mix uh a bunch of pepperoncinis sliced pepperoncinis and um some butter and you just let it go and it comes out great i would say go light on the 
the recipes online often involve a, a stick of butter and a whole packet of au jus mix. Au jus mix is mostly, you know, uh, is mostly uh, salt and MSG. Yes, um, please. <laughs> so you can you can lighten up on both of those pretty nicely. You also can like, you know, when I when I make it, that's like the simplest version of it, where it's like a magic trick that it comes out really tasty. Um, I usually make it with a little less butter and, um, you know, I brown the meat and sometimes I'll, you know, uh, lightly cook some, some onions and garlic and throw those in there. Um, but man, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It tastes really good. Ron, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. A liter of ranch or gallon of scallops? Pick. A gallon of scallops. All right. That Mississippi roast pot roast sounds really, really good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that. It's great. It's a, it's a real, it's a real champ. And you know, I made a New York Times version of it once that involved making your own ranch. Yeah, it was not better. Jesse, let me ask you a question: liter of yeah. ranch, gallon of scallops, or five pound tub of Cavender's all-purpose Greek seasoning? <laughs> I've never even heard of Cavender's all-purpose Greek seasoning, but it sounds great. This is a Greek seasoning that was introduced to me by my wife, who's a whole human being in her own right. She used to have this all the time in her house when she was a kid. And I got to tell you, this is the greatest thing I've ever... I, I'll, You know how I used to, in the middle of the night, go out and just eat a, a spoonful of mayonnaise? Yeah. Now I'll just eat a spoonful of Cavender's Greek seasoning. What is the season? What does it taste like? It's it's a it's a a tantalizing taste treat as it says here. Here you just like stacks upon stacks of it. You can only get it in massive quantities. That's part of the reason I love it. Oh, I want to get this. I want to get this. Uh, this uh, uh, apron. Can you see this? It's salt. It's pepper. It's uh, oregano. Um, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. It does have MSG in it, and I think that's part of the part of the appeal. Well, I mean, I keep MSG next to my salt what do you call it what do you call a salt bowl uh, salt name. pig yeah it's not a salt pig salt cellar called salt, salt cellar cellar i think salt that's cellar. what it is yeah, 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 yeah. I, I keep a little thing of uh, accent next to there for when yeah. i'm making a savory dish i just um uh oh i see you can't uh you can't post a link into the comments um uh john i'm gonna share a link directly to you uh, so that you can share my favorite, my favorite pre-mixed spice. Go you ahead. know already, John, about my passion for father's country hams. Yes. Uh, and I don't even, I'm not a big country ham eater. Uh, I know you're, a, John, more of a country ham liquor. That's true. Um, I love to lick a ham. But uh, I'm not a huge country ham guy, but I, I love, uh, I, I love a, a properly smoked uh, salt cured bacon among other things. But one of the products from Father's Country Hams that I absolutely can't get enough of is this prime rib uh, rub. Uh, mm. so did you send I, me a, did you send me a link for it? Yeah, I just put it in the private chat. It's there oh in the pri chat. okay here it is. Oh yeah I got you. Stand by. So if if you're out there and you need you need bacon um or you need a country ham, they also make uh you know they make uh uh more traditional non-country hams as well, um, but but their specialty is country ham. Father's country hams in Benton, Kentucky, I want to say. Seven, for seven bucks, you get eight ounces. Bremen, Kentucky. After many requests that this seasoning be available to the public, Father decided, thank you, Father, to package his <laughs> preferred seasoning for prime ribbon steak. However, it was proven to complement all types of food, just sprinkle generously on, et cetera, et cetera. It looks delicious to me. I'll tell you what I love to put it on, John. Yeah. I love to slice up a head of cauliflower. Uh huh. Okay, here we go. S slice it into thin layers, you know? Yeah, like what they call in the, in the, in the Bon Appetit cauliflower steaks. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'll just olive oil the shit out of them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and roast them really hot. And put a grip of that stuff on there. Who boy is that good? Uh, uh, yes, roasting cauliflower is a delight. And I, I was looking for the person who was also recommending Tony Kasher's various seasoning mixes. Those are good too. But try that Cavender's. You know what? I'm going to send you a. Do you want a five pound tub of Cavender's, Jesse, or would you just like a t a ten canister starter pack? 
let's try. <laughs> let's start with it. Do they have a do they have a like a palette? Can you send me a palette? Yeah, I'll send you a Costco palette. Great. Uh, Ron, Ron gets the patience award, the says Irony Maiden. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, Ron. Anytime. So, yeah, I've just stumbled on this. Uh, I'm a big fan. I catch the podcast all the time. I love you guys. You guys are hilarious. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ron. Dude, Ron but said that need... with such conviction. I love, I love it. it. You, you don't go down south, I take it. What do you... We've been to we've been to the ATL on multiple occasions. Yes. Okay. Well, Austin, where are you, Texas, Ron? Which is probably you know, I'm, I'm outside of Charleston, in, uh, South Carolina right now. We've been well. I'll tell you, we've been to um, we've been to the old Dominion State, the Tar Heel State of North Carolina, multiple times. Yeah. But I have not. We have not been to Charleston. We'd love to come and play. It's a beautiful, a beautiful city, haunted. I dare say. Yeah, it is. Well, it's kind of a museum these days, but yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. We uh, have a we have a listener who's actually in the chat right now who's been trying to get us to come to. She has an arrangement with a theater in Memphis, Tennessee. Ah, I'd like to go there. That sounds pretty fun. nice. Yeah, where would we play if we were to come to Charleston? You're a musician. You must know all the all the venues. You'd probably go to like the music hall. The music hall. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's a grand old theater. Jennifer Marmer, make a <laughs> note of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know when it was going to happen. <laughs> Sorry, Jennifer. Please make a note of the music hall in Charleston, South Carolina. All right. You know, Charleston is is where, uh, you know, uh, uh, Paul F. Tompkins and his wife was a whole human in her own right. Jenny Handed Tompkins got married. And I was there. Sounds great to me. Whoa, is that you, Ron? Yeah. Who's calling? Really talented musician. Oh. It's a harmonica playing friend of mine. We're putting together a tour of, of Maine in June. Oh boy! Wait, yeah. Now, now you're really getting me because you're like you never. Hey, come to are Charleston, you going to be in? But uh, you're going to Maine. Bangor in June. Bangor in June. I will yeah. not be in Bangor until the near Bangor till maybe the very end of June. Oh yeah. But what kind of music do you perform so I can tell all my friends in Maine? Oh, we play blues. <laughs> Oh, we play blues. Blues, blues adjacent, yes. And uh, and what uh, instrument do you play in the band? I play guitar. And what kind of what's your axe, Ron? My axe? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I've got a few different ones, so I'll probably play a Telecaster. Do you have an axe to grind? Do you have a dispute with someone in your band that Je Judge Jesse Thorne can adjudicate? No, but I did send you guys a note about a. Uh, a uh, domestic uh, quarrel. Go ahead, tell us about it. Well, uh, my partner here, she's uh, she works in the house. She has her office, and uh, I I haven't been able to determine if she loves paper hey. or hates oh. paper. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, take it that's your partner. Okay, go yes. on. Yes, and. Uh, <laughs> Hi. The, uh, Hi. Are you the Pete Don Rodgman? That is yes. one and only. Wow, how did you land this one? I'm uh, a publicist. Go away. <laughs> it's just my dispute. <laughs> wow. But uh, yeah, so um, the office is, it's mostly paper. Yeah. It, you know, it's like a whole bedroom size office. Why are you talking about me? And uh, well, I'm trying to judge John to uh, 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 Figure this John, just, we yeah. plug directly into an episode of the Lockhorns. <laughs> <laughs> you know what things are down in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, spicy. Some of the yeah. some of the food and some of the days are spicy. Yeah, there's good food down here. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what the problem? The problem is that her office is full of paper. Full of paper, paper, and and it's overflowing. Of course, it it reaches other rooms as well, uh, and it it probably dates back to. We've been down here like seven years, yeah, and uh, it dates back to prior to those times. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm trying to get her to be more mm, computer centric and saving things in what we call files on said computer why is this a topic why is this an angle on this interview because he's a judge okay what what is you what do you what would you prefer go what do you want what do you want us to judge here well i i don't think that what do you want to have happen i don't think any of the current paper can be turned into files 
retroactively. So they've all been, you know, deleted and printed and all of that. I'm going to recycle. I'm a recycle. I'm from Maine. I'm Portland, Maine. Go, go, go away. Ron wants me to just drop a match. That, well, <laughs> yeah, there's the house and all of that, you know. Yeah. But uh, now to, to moving forward is to, to learn how to print and save PDFs and, and have actually a file system on this thing that is is eminently designed to uh to to you know uh coordinate and uh save your files i keep expecting ron's wife to re-enter the frame holding a frying pan <laughs> <laughs> ah, she doesn't like my frying pan well, what kind of frying pan is it ron uh cast iron let's take a look at it <laughs> you want to see oh that? mary's gonna go get the frying yeah. pan Yes. I mean, I think it's trial by trial by by frying pan. Trial by iron. <laughs> yeah, if your cast iron is cool, then I think we're going to find in your favor. If your cast iron is trash, oh, it, it's pretty good cast iron, I believe. I, I don't know. I, I've been debating getting more, but just having. Yeah, this is a good question. Does it burn things, or do you burn things in it? That's the old fashioned, and this is what I, this is what I like. Yeah, Kong. This one is. Oh, it's a, uh, this is like one of those ceramics. It's a camp chef. Hang on, let me put you solo layout so I can take a look at this. So that's what camp chef? Camp chef. I've never seen that before. That looks like a lodge. And this one is brand. kitchen smith. It's like a coppery. I don't know. Well, I'm sure that's a nonstick surface there. What I is like your, this one? It's what like, is your name? What is your what is your name, Ron's partner and whole human Mary being? Elizabeth Regan. Mary Ellen. Not Regan. Oh. Mary what? Mary Ellen? Elizabeth Regan. Elizabeth Regan, not Reagan. Okay, got it. Yes. Uh, so, uh, what do you want us? What do you want Jesse Thorne to do for you? Uh, He's well, the judge for today. I'm oh, just, that's right. I'm just facilitating. Uh, that that Mary learn how to save her files in PDFs or you know some other type of electronical. Uh, I do. I do format. have a lot of electronic, but and, I also and have that's paper. All. I have both. Just I find it judge I find Jesse. in favor of Elizabeth uh, because she's more fun. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I am less fun. <laughs> You're lucky I like you. Yeah. Oh. I don't like you right now. Why is this a topic? Ron, are either of you a member of Maximum Fun? Oh, not yet. Well, this is a great time to do it. Go to MaximumFun.org slash join. I shall. I'm a supporting member. Thank you very much, Ron. I appreciate that. What's the name of your band? Uh, well, up in Maine, we'll be Poke Chop and the Other White Meats. You change from state to state? Uh, you know, I changed it down here. We're we're in the low country, so we're the low billies down here. Okay, fair enough. And where are you playing in Bangor? Uh, Bangor will probably be part of the 4th of July festivities oh yeah yeah i won't be anywhere near there but i'll be thinking of you yeah all right if you see joel mann up there have a battle of the bands there you go yeah, yeah. I'd great, like that. great to see great hey do you do a, a tom waits impersonation by any chance yeah i don't do any tom you've got a nice voice and you got a little soul patch so i thought maybe you did yeah no i really like tom waits so who's thank you very much let's talk to you more yeah <laughs> excuse me jesse it's gonna be me and ron for a while no all right ron we'll talk to you later all right okay? hey go bruins Thanks, Thanks, Ron. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, go Bruins, Bruins everybody. No one knows. Ron mm -hmm. went to buy his uh, Telecaster at the Guitar Center. Yeah. And they, they went like this, and they said, grow something here and come back. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to me until you do something like this, yeah, right? No. It's too clear. Hey, Robin, <laughs> I don't see if your camera's on, but I'm going to put Robin on stage right now. If you have a dispute or a comment or a question for... Uh, Jesse Thorne, me, Judge John, me, Bailiff for the Day, uh, Judge, uh, I can't even, it's uh, so hard not to say it. Me, Bailiff for the Day, John Hodgman, or uh, forever producer, Jennifer Marmer, let us know. But here's Robin now. Hi, Robin. Hi. Robin. How are you? Hello. I'm so good. How are you? Good. Thank you very much. Where wow. are you? Where are you dialing in from, if I may ask? Uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. 
Oh, that's where Kate lives. Salt cool. Lake City. Do you know? Yeah, you guys have the... a lot of fans out here. You should come. You should do a show out here. That would I be. Know, but Ron okay. wants us to come down south. Right. So well, I vote Salt Lake City, and then we do the show from the Beauty Lab parking lot. Shout out, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, like <laughs> viewers. Why? That's... How is it that anytime we let Jennifer on my? <laughs> <laughs> She's no interest in the topics at hand, just always just steering it to real housewives, just steering it to those housewives. I love uh, it. Do, Robin, are you a fan of the real housewives of Salt Lake City? Is that you know, you I have not observed it. Um, okay. I've heard good things, you know, from mm -hmm. people who, who like that sort of thing. Um, there is a, a local there's a local tequila called Vita Tequila yep. that's owned Lisa by Barlow. Them. <laughs> and um it's uh it's so it's so good that it that it has to be imported because the the agave spirits that are made here suck um because they're not real tequila um mm -hmm. obviously um but that's pretty much my entire take on jennifer you know, you i know have them. a question for you robin i want to get to your question in a moment but jennifer do any of the housewives i know you watch multiple franchises mm -hmm. Do any of the housewives have a signature all-purpose spice spice blend? They've got candles. They've got <laughs> perfume. They've got alcohol. I don't know about a spice blend. Yeah, there's got to be a real housewives rub. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's not many of them that spend a lot of time cooking. Cooking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Robin, yeah, for but, that insight. So I you're telling me, it. Rob, you're telling me, Robin, that the tequila that's made in Salt Lake City, Utah, isn't the best. <laughs> you know, our our blue agave that we that we totally grow here just doesn't quite doesn't quite hit. No, yeah, I don't know. I um, there are several that call themselves tequilas, and I just think that's that's uh, not cool, you know, because it's not made in Mexico, and um, yeah, we gotta. It's because, made in, the, in a Rocky Mountain state that was yeah. settled by a famous yeah. totaling religious yeah. sect. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's uh, made and sold in a state that uh, doesn't like it, and um, that comes across, in my opinion. I just yeah, need to report on that those sodi pop drive-throughs. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you yep. get the you get all the mixes of the soda yep. pops. That that started here. Yep. You want a cookie? You want a soda? Jesse, you joked one time that that was a restaurant idea from a nine-year-old. And I just, yeah. <laughs> I say that all the time. It's a perfect it really is. summation of, it's of a lot fair. of things here. Um, but you guys should, yeah, you guys should come to a show here. That would be. But would you be know what? Nine-year-olds got great lives. They got, Nine they got good doing ideas. their thing. You yeah. Know? We should. Nothing we should wrong with that. Them. Give, uh, give more credence to the ideas from the nine-year-olds. Um, what is your, uh, what is your case for the court of Judge so, Jesse Thorne? That's me. So, yeah. Oh, I know. I'm so excited that you're finally at the helm. I, I've been listening since 2018, really quick, and I just thank you. I just wanted to thank you both so much for all of your insights and everything you've said on the podcast and in your other podcasts. You've both helped me so much with just being a person and and um, and like uh, with my my gender and stuff. I I just don't know where I would be without. Um, I mean, particularly Jesse, but um, also, you know, John and Jennifer and, and Jordan and everybody at Max Fun. You guys are just incredible people, and I'm so grateful Robin, for you. let's be clear. Them to a lesser extent. Right? <laughs> like, well, yeah, we put that 60%, yeah. maybe. <laughs> let's get real. Pretty obvious. Pretty um, obvious. <laughs> um, okay. I have kind of a weird question um, that I know the answer to. Can I just say to. thank you, though? Thank you for those nice yeah. words. Thank, thank you for yeah. saying them. No, thank you. It's it. such a pleasure to get to share that perspective with you. Also, John, thank you for uh, not doing that impression of Edgar Oliver anymore. Um, <laughs> because I don't think he would appreciate it, but it was hilarious. You don't think um, that Edgar would appreciate it? I don't think Edgar Oliver would appreciate an impression of him. But your impression of him was uncanny, and I, I, I laughed only, every time. I was only doing it because I love him so much. So exactly. if I have offended you... Edgar Oliver, I do apologize. And it was fine. I just, I just thought. Anyway, um, uh, you know, it's not fun unless everyone's having fun, right? Um, uh, okay, I have a weird question that I know the answer to, but I just want your thoughts on it. Um, so, obviously, everybody likes what they like, right? But 
straightness, right? Like being like a straight person is something that we're all kind of, is kind of ascribed to all of us, right? It's like something that people assume is like the standard. And so I've, yeah, I've, I've been called out uh, for, for asserting sometimes that um, a lot of straight people like can be talked out of it or like that being straight is boring um, or seems boring. And uh, people have said that that's, you know, the equivalent of like straight men saying like, oh, well, lesbians just haven't met the right man. And I don't think that's equivalent, but I do think it's kind of a similar kind of a gross thing to, to like say out loud to people. And I just uh, wanted your thoughts on that. But uh, that's an interesting question. I mean, first of all, as you pointed out, it's certainly not equivalent uh, because that's not hegemony doesn't go both directions. Right. So um, the cultural force of straightness in the world is uh, the overwhelming power in this situation. And, um, you know, it, it's not the same in each direction. However, I also I do think that it is reasonable to say that there are, uh, you know, there are parallels or equivalencies, right? Like, yeah. and I think that at the center of that is that um, when someone is asserting their identity to you, they know better than you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's basically like you know, it's like it's like when people say, um. You know, it's it, when people when people ask me about my kids and their gender identities, yeah, and it's like, uh, you know, my my answer to it is just sort of like, what am I going to do? Not take their word for it? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> they're inside them, and I'm not. So, yeah. um, and yeah, I think, uh, 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 I think, I think that it is the it is the place of all people outside of the hegemonic cultural forces to um uh to make fun of the <laughs> the hegemons for being boring yeah i think that is very reasonable <laughs> um because that is the definition of like yeah. being the big majority is fundamentally boring right and, yeah, yeah and and by the way hegemon is an accepted alternative pronunciation of hodgman <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at me. Obviously, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, th I think that there's, I think there's, there's room for, uh, there's plenty of room for silly jokes. Um, I think that the, uh, the main, the main touch point that is worth remembering there is um, m making sure that that people have autonomy in their in their own sense of self, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Like. Um, uh, like as a straight dude who, um, uh, <laughs> whose, whose straightness was a mild disappointment to my family. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I promise you that, uh, uh, I, I promise you that like having grown, grown up, whatever, five blocks from the Castro, I would have, I would have gladly chosen uh, a broader identity had it made sense to me. Yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't, right? So, um, uh, so I, I think bearing in mind that that people know who they are uh, uh, is is probably your best bet. And like, and keep, and like, I've always said it with lightness and like, and like in in jest, right? And I think that that is where where like the it's been kind of a misconception that I've. That that that's it. That gets that anyway. Thank you. That gets it exactly what I was trying to get at. Was like yeah. I really am just just making fun of people for being boring. Um, but uh, I, but yeah, I would I would add to that, Robin. That um, when you are able to engage those things with lightness, um, I think it is beneficial to everyone involved because you know one of the things that I realized when my oldest told us she was a girl and she was assigned male at birth. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and we had always presumed she was a boy was how tightly we had held those presumptions about who she was. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't, you know, I, I mean, I, I'd like to think there, certainly there are, there are 
cultural forces at, at hand, but I don't think it was because of bigotry, right? Like, like I said, I, my, my neighbor was trans in 1986, you know? Yeah. Um, but like, uh, I realized how, how tight I was holding on to things that were presumptions. Right. And, yeah. um, and I think now, you know, like my youngest who, uh, who identifies as a non-binary girl, like, um, for her, uh, I, we didn't go into it with those presumptions and, you know, she's seven. She can choose whatever path she wants. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, she, she has, but, but she, but she only gets to choose that path if we all hold, hold things lightly. So it's, it's like, uh, yeah. Uh, to, to be respectful is also not to um, is not to corner people. Yeah, you know? like no, not to true. not to feel like everything has to be locked down. Yeah, absolutely. And Robin, you know, I know that you're just making a joke, but you know, no one is really boring. Right. Yeah. You know. Of course, I love. They, they may have difficulty expressing what makes them interesting. Right. I certainly do from time to time. I don't but care. everyone's complicated and interesting inside. So. Absolutely. Speaking of no one being boring, John, you know, it's the Max Fun Drive, and all of the shows in Maximum Fun have created bonus content. Uh, for Bullseye, we created some bonus content for members only that I am really proud of. Uh, it's called Hey, What's Your Job? Mm -hmm. And we just, we just typed into our social media as Hey, What's Your Job? Um, they were collected and collated by the producers of Bullseye. And then uh, they sat down half a dozen people in front of me um, digitally uh, about whom I knew nothing when the screen turned on and we hit record. And just I started with, hey, what's your name? And hey, what's your job? And learned mm -hmm. about people who um, a woman who makes vestments for Japanese Buddhist priests. Wow. Which, yeah. You know, if you're thinking of the kind of like when she said I, she didn't say what kind of Buddhist vestments she made when uh at the very start and i assumed it was those kind of like saffron colored robes that some buddhist priests wear but actually japanese buddhist priests wear kimono with like big giant sleeves that go practically down to the ground and all these different things um we had uh yeah there was a great uh there was a great apprentice electrician who's in his 40s just became an apprentice electrician recently. Uh, he told us all the uh, different names that the different trades people call other trades. Um, uh, like, so if you want to find out what electricians call plumbers, um, that's the way to that's the way to do it. Somebody that lives like deep underground, discovered trying to discover dark matter. Uh, a guy who puts all day his job is to put labels on records. And it turns out that when you put labels on records, there is no glue involved. Hmm. Which Go on. blew my mind. Yeah. How do they At stick? Uh, what, where's the pressure? Addition? Oh wow. Oh, how it's, about it, that? Isn't Smash. that bananas? Un yeah. Um. So all kinds of all, all kinds of cool people. Um. Uh, the the city manager of Weed, California. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about their their city name licensing program. Yeah, great <laughs> <laughs> city in America. Um, so yeah, we go yeah, to maximumfund.org slash join, and if you're already a member, do listen to that because I'm really proud. Of, I think it's really really fun. Like, yeah, people I, I actually are, listened back to it. Which people I are totally loving to it do. in the chat. Robin, thank you so much for joining yeah. us from Salt Lake City. Yeah, you're so welcome. I I upgraded my membership because you got you got me with that bucket hat and the maximum bag. So thank the you. The maximum guys. bag thank is you. very funny and it's a really thank good you, big bag. I was, I really was in the cool middle bag. of listening to the JJ Go bonus episode with Ben Harrison when I and you said today we're we're doing this and I was like oh my god and uh, popped over here. So thank you guys. Awesome, Robin. So, thank you for sharing uh, sharing some time with us and thank yeah. you very much for being a member. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It's yeah. been done. We have a, oh, I didn't mean to cut Robin off there, but thank you very much, Robin. Yeah. As Robin mentioned, we've been doing live George Just It Goes every morning at 930 Pacific, 1230 yeah. Eastern. So go follow the Jordan Jesse Go socials if you want to watch those. Ben Ben Harrison joined us this morning. It was very nice to see him. I came to Max Fun for JJ Ho. I stayed for Feeling Seen, Secretly Incredibly Fascinating, Free With Ads, and Bullseye. Thank you, wow. Neliosaurus. 
Uh, and I also wanted to point out that uh, Ron, aka Melee Conure, just joined for the very first time. Thank you, Ron, for being here. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, and, if you uh, join, make sure and mention it in the chat so that we can thank you. Yeah. Uh, because we would love to do that. Uh, and we have one more person to talk to here named Raul. Raul, are you uh, are you available to speak with us? Oh, well. <laughs> yeah? Well, hey. is, yeah I'm... Is this a good time, yes or no? Yes, it is a good time. Great. I wasn't expecting this. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Did you did you fall asleep, hit the keyboard, and then accidentally inserted you into the waiting room? Yeah, something like that. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really nice to see you. I'm John Hodgman. Here is your judge for the day, Jesse Thorne, and our producer, Jennifer Marmer. Raul, how can, where are you dialing in from, and what's your question? I'm from Mexico. I'm from Chihuahua. Oh, like wow. the dog. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jesse knows a thing about, too, about a Chihuahua. <laughs> I got one. I got one. I got one in my house and seven thousand in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't be nervous because everyone in the chat is ready for Raul's vibe. We're all feeling it, Raul. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, are you just calling to say hi, or did you have a dispute or a question or? Well, I uh, I was thinking about it that because I I, I joined the the Bitly uh, link. But oh, yeah. uh, and I and I said because of the of what you were talking with the other guys. So, uh-huh. Uh huh. Oh, maybe you maybe like, you joined what, what? the Bitly link thinking you would just watch. You didn't realize that you could be put in at any moment. Yeah, precisely. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, well, but I I, 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 I was I was thinking like uh, if I had, if I had something to debate about, and then I and then I I have this recent thing coming. Um, I. I'm just uh, returning from Mexico City. Uh, I went to a music festival in there, and uh, and then I and then I saw uh, like some comments on Twitter about that about that music festival, and then I saw someone like complaining about. Um, I, I don't know if, if if you ever been into a concert and when the people get really really excited, they start to throw things away, and uh, sure, uh, but. I mean, I think it's part of the of the situation you are involved. You know, like uh, I mean, I I don't like when people throw things uh, <laughs> at me generally, mm -hmm. but when you are in a concert, uh, well, it's part of the of the of the situation you are involved. So, what do you think about? Uh, do you think that uh, it's not okay to throw like beer during a concert, or is 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 it, or is it okay to do that? Who was playing? Yeah. Oh, I I went to see Kendrick Lamar uh, on Saturday, and on Sunday I saw LCD Sound System. LCD Sound System. Yeah. And when you're talking about throwing beer, you know I only go to chamber music concerts. <laughs> when yeah. you're talking about I only throwing go to early beer, music concerts. If there's no loot, I'm out of there. Yeah, that's right. If there are no elbows in there. Yeah, if there are no oboes, I'm out. Yeah, I'm a uh, big oboe, oboe guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Give Since me the give back. me the double reeds, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, specifically, but if you uh, but if you're at a concert where they're throwing beer, you're talking about throwing a, a a can of beer or just the liquid. No, like you have your glass, your plastic glass of oh, beer, and cup. then it's mm -hmm. it is yeah, your plastic and you cup. You just throw it, okay. And then you you are just like jumping, and then a lot of a lot of people you know like throw yeah exactly excitement. All right, Jesse Thorne, what do you think about that? You're the judge. <laughs> well, I had a I had a firsthand experience with this. Uh, me and my friends had just gotten our band back together, and our first gig was at a place in Illinois called Bob's Country Bunker. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think you're making an obscure cultural reference, Jesse. Yeah. So that's just the story of the film the blues brothers <laughs> but it's part of it um somebody in the in somebody in the chat by the way just asked what are graham and dave like in real life the answer is exactly like they are on the podcast mm -hmm. you're never quite sure whether dave is picking on you <laughs> and graham is the sweetest guy in the world but actually they're both the sweetest guy in the world they're both very sweet mm -hmm. um wow raul i'm gonna find against you here uh I don't think, I think it is fun to throw things and have fun at shows. It is fun to jump up and down. It can be fun to even bump into other people and uh, all of those kinds of things. 
And I would even say that it's fun to throw water. Mm. But I would not say that it's fun to throw beer. Uh, I think beer is simply too gross, uh, especially because I, I really don't think there's any reason to be throwing beer at the Kendrick Lamar or LCD Sound System show. These are not, these are not very punk rock performances. Uh, we, there's no, no one signed up to be gross uh, in the way that they might have uh, if they were going to certain other types of music where banging into each other or being gross are central to the experience. And everybody signed up for too it. Too sticky for Jesse is what they're yeah. saying. Here, right? Ultimately, I'm going to say too sticky for me. But on the other hand, by the time some uh, concert gets to the Kendrick Lamar LCD sound system traveling to Mexico City scale of concert, I'm out anyway because I don't want to fucking stand around in the sun for the worst sound ex live concert experience you can have I do you say is there an age limit to to do that yeah i think the age There's limit to me limit. the age limit is uh it's it's a experience that stretches from age 17 to age 21. Oh my. <laughs> i think if you're a senior in college you shouldn't be doing that it's just not worth it not oh, fucking wow. worth it Jesse, um, way over <laughs> go see the same bands in their own concerts where you get to see their whole sets in a much, much closer up and you get to really enjoy the thing. Um, and you're not drunk in the sun. <laughs> Were people throwing things at the River Bottom Nightmare Band show? I don't know what this is a reference to, Jesse. Do you? <laughs> no, this is, an, this is too obscure for me. Too obscure. Well, thank you, Raul. Thank you for joining us. Sorry to put you on the spot, but everyone enjoyed seeing you. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you and we appreciate your being a, a, a listener there in, in Chihuahua. Yeah. yeah. And I, I haven't been to Mexico City yet. Jesse went with his mom instead. That's the way it goes. But I'll get down there and we'll say hello. You can come with me next time if you, you want to, John. We're going to do a Judge John Hodgman yeah, show and you're you going you to throw a beer on us. Yeah, you should do a show over there. You can throw I, a beer I at me go. if you want. You can throw a beer at me if you want. Yes. Raul. I'd love that. Nice. I love that. What's your favorite beer? Uh, it's a local Mexican beer called India. Can't wait to get a bottle smacked in my face from the <laughs> third row. Hey. I'm not Raul a good. Uh, promise me, Raul. My aim, my aim is not good, so. Uh, All right, then probably. just aim it at Jesse, and it'll hit me for sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> Take care. We do have one other person in the waiting room before we sign off, because uh, it's getting to be nighttime here in the East Coast. Nicole, I'm speaking to you right now. Uh, give me two thumbs up if you would like to be in the show or are you just watching two thumbs up from nicole here's two thumbs up from nicole <gasps> famous nicole oh this is irony Watch maiden out. nicole what are your uh what are this your pronouns oh uh she her thank you for this asking. is irony maiden herself Myself. namer of many great judge john hodgman pun titles thank you so much oh thank you thank you i um, decided to Show my face, so I would be a face, and is, uh, not just a not just a handle. I really I'm, appreciate. I'm Thank starstruck. You. I'm starstruck. Here. I know, <laughs> incredible. I mean, all of the We're people who submit the titles are incredible. Like if, yeah. when we ask for title requests on the on the Maximum Fun subreddit, it's so much fun to see what you all are getting up to in there. It's 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 awfully the hard. The subreddit is a lot of fun. It's not uncommon that I'll be like, "Can we do two or three of them?" And maybe we will in the future. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we will. But it's uh, it's really terrific to see that little community there. And I, I hope that um, I, I'm very grateful for your contributions to the show. Thank you and very all, much. All I, I specifically joined Reddit for you guys. And then a few days ago, I specifically joined Twitch for you guys. Wow. So you, you, you keep signing me up to social media platforms now, here... that I'm not particularly interested in being on. But here I am. Now here's the here's the que here's the question here's the question. Yeah. yeah. Did you specifically join Maximum Fun? I did. Yeah. Jennifer knows. Yes. Jennifer yes. knows. I did. I had I had a, I had all faith that I knew what the answer to that was going to be. This is a a great person to end this on, uh, Nicole. Stand by just for a second. I just want to I want to point out some wonderful comments that we had here because Jesse asked. So, um, sure. you know, uh, Connie. Hi, Connie. Nice to see you again. 
Thank joined you, finally last weekend. Thank you, and can't wait for Thank my JJ you. Hope pin to arrive to make everybody feel jealous. Absolutely. Your dogs are going to be so jealous of you, Connie, walking around with a lapel pin. Mm-hmm. Connie wants us to come to San Luis Obispo. You know, you know, don't throw me in the briar patch. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was born and bred. Oh, man, uh, hanging, hanging out and chilling in the slow? Come on. Jam- Giovanni Sanchez boosted their membership earlier this week. Thank you so much, Thank you. Giovanni. Uh, and uh, and uh, Prof... Prophead Prof points out, I wouldn't put it past LCC sound system to include an oboe too. Fair enough. Sure. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, it's the Max Fun Drive. I'm John Hodgman to, oh, I pointed the, the right way this time. Right over there is Jesse Thorne. Down there is Jennifer Marmer. Uh, Jennifer's the producer of the show. Jesse is uh, the co-creator and co-host of the show with me, John Hodgman. It, is, it makes us so proud and happy to make the show for you. Week after week, every week, we make 52, roughly 52 shows a year, but only two weeks out of the year do we ever mention how the show gets made. And that's mm-hmm. because it gets made by Jesse and Jennifer, our editor, uh, AJ, our, 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 our video editor, Daniel, um, our, our social media person, Natty, and formerly uh, Marie. Uh, so many other people behind the scenes make Judge John Hodgman, and they're all, they all employed gainfully and with benefits thanks to the other big collaborator of the show which is you the listener supporters of maximum fun and this is the time of year when we say hey if you are not already a member uh, or have been putting it off for whatever reason uh, or if you just started listening and didn't realize that this is how this is how we make the show go please go over to maximumfund.org join and please become a member even at five dollars a month is massively helpful to help us not only fund the show because about 70% of all of our operating income is is contributed by you our listeners but also for us to plan ahead and to pay all these wonderful people to make the show go that's what i had to say about that now anything you want to add Jesse Thorne before we before we get to Nicole's do you have a dispute or a question Nicole or are you just saying I have no beef i just wanted to say hi and i know you guys have to go so i decided to sneak in at the end I appreciate so, that. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah. Where, thank where, you. where are you calling from? Aside from that incredible nook of your house with that wonderful bay window <laughs> that everyone's talking about. Uh, this isn't. This isn't my house. This is my office. Oh, uh, nice. yeah. And I couldn't sign on until my boss had left for the day because he kept coming in and saying things to me. Uh-huh. So, oh, brother. You know, yeah, I was ruining my vibe. Um, I am in my office. I am in Nyack, New York. Nyack. Oh. New York. We're an East Coast pal. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. I am approximately 45 minutes north of uh, Midtown Manhattan. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to pick some random spot. Like, I'm approximately 45 minutes north of Squeaky Chair, New York. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> if the Squeaky Chair is Midtown, then yes. How dare these bosses interrupt our judgment time? I know it's not it- fair. It's not fair. Bosses are going to boss until 5 p.m. I got to say, mm-hmm. it is such a, it is so great that, um, that you are our bosses. You are Nicole. And, and you, every one of you who is a, a member listener of Maximum Fun, you're the boss. You're the greatest bosses in the world to work for. Because n- not only do you allow us to make something for you that we love, but we, but we get to spend time with you. We get to meet you week after week on the air uh, of the Judge John Hodgman show. And I don't mind telling you, I'm a much, much better and better informed and frankly, Robin, less boring person because of all of the perspectives that you've shared with me over more than now 12 years of doing Judge John Hodgman. Best bosses. I'm going to get you all mugs that say best bosses. Actually, we should do that for next Max Fun Drive. You know yeah. what I mean? Number one boss mugs because the listeners are the bosses. And and if it weren't for you, we wouldn't get to make the show. MaximumFun.org slash join. Right, Jesse? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. We're over 11,000 members boosting, upgrading, newly joining at MaximumFun.org slash join. Uh, 11,131 is the last I saw. We've only got like, gosh, I guess about, I guess we got about 50 
60 hours left in the Max Fund Drive. So yeah. don't put it off. Just go ahead and do it. It's maximumfund.org slash join. The, the good news is not only will you get thank you gifts and bonus content, um, also every time you listen, you'll know that you're part of it, right? You'll know that uh, that's something that you're doing, that you are uh, making our show possible. And that is a that is a really great feeling. Take it from me, a, a guy who... You know, um, I support a lot of the media that I love directly. Um, yeah. And every time I listen, for example, to my favorite baseball podcast, Effectively Wild, I know that they don't have to take sports gambling ads uh, <laughs> because me and my fellow listeners are supporting them directly. Um, Can I and, tell you how happy I am? There are a lot of things that make me happy about Judge John Hodgman. But mm -hmm. one of the things that makes me very, very happy is that I've never had to do a live read of an ad about trimming one's pubic hair. <laughs> now, John, I've, I've done a fair amount of that on Jordan Jesse Go, a venue in which it is No offense, no offense. It's gotta get, look, it's gotta get done. It's gotta get done. Yeah. But it Otherwise makes, it would make me a little uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's a terrific product. Do you know what I mean? I enjoy it. Yeah. But I'm My glad favorite I... is listening listening to the Doughboys talk about uh, trimming their pubic hair, which is uh, that's a I mean it's an image that I don't want, <laughs> right? And it's a service that I don't life need. Friends, yeah. But I mean, you know, I am also glad that I've never had to read a disclaimer about you know if you have if you have a gambling addiction, call this hotline. <laughs> you know, right. that, it's a it's a uh, we do have ads, but you know we get to be selective about the ads that we run. I get to read ads for products that I really enjoy because that's not where the money's coming from. The money's coming from the listeners. And that's, and that's why nobody Max ever destroyed so their life with high quality cookware. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's between Ron and Elizabeth Regan down there. Someone, someone might've Ron might've gotten beamed with a frying pan is what I'm saying. Might've gotten beamed with a frying pan. Maybe a little, a little, ding, a little ding. Never mind. Anyway, sorry about that. All right. Maximumfund.org slash join. Maximumfund.org slash join. Nicole, is there anything you want to say before we take off? I want to say, it's no. really nice to meet you. Nice it's you nice know? to meet you too. I mean, it's yeah. true. Like, I, oh, lots of time, and it's not just you. Lots of times in the wild, I'll be out there and someone will say, I'm this person from the podcast or I'm that person from the podcast. And I'm going to be on, I'll be very candid with you. I would say seven times out of eight, <laughs> I need some reminding. I need some yeah. reminding. And then, but because it's just my brain is gone. Yeah, no, my brain is the same. I but get it. But when I get that reminding, I'm like, oh, it's so great to meet you. It's always, I mean, I just know that I'm wandering through this world full of friends that I've talked to and, and who knows when they're going to approach me in an, air, in an airport or, uh, or, uh, or a public space. The one thing I don't like is when I wake up in the middle of the night and they're standing over me watching me sleep. Please don't do that. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I mean, I, no, 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 Nicole. Look, <laughs> we've been through it, sorry and it's fine it, now. Nicole. I mean, it was fine. It was, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there's almost, you know, there was an early Judge John Hodgman ruling where I was like, uh, "Don't take pictures with people, famous people, because they're humans, not scenery." And I stand by it. Like, I'll do a photo or whatever. But I, I but it is absolutely great to go up to someone who has impacted your life, affected your life, and say, hey, you made my life a little bit better. Thank you for the work you do. And everyone enjoys that. And I've been so touched by that when people come up to me about that, to say that about Judge John Hodgman. And I'd just like to say back to all the member listeners, hey, you've made my life better. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate your support. Maximumfund.org slash join is where you can offer that support if you haven't done so already. And uh, I don't know what there is to say uh, about that other than hey, Jesse looks got a cool hat on all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess my fresh air hat I got for directly supporting my favorite public radio show. There we go. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, there we go. All nice right, so slash join. we love you all. Tomorrow morning, let's just say now, tomorrow morning at uh, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 a.m. Eastern over at the Maximum Fun HQ YouTube channel, you can watch Jesse and Jordan's live stream. Yep. Tomorrow morning at, and I hate, I hate to counter program. I didn't realize this was happening. So you can bounce between or open two windows, but I'll be doing get your pets oh. here at noon Eastern tomorrow here on uh, wherever you're watching this right now. 
And so if you've got a pet, Connie, bring those dogs back. You know what I'm talking about, Connie? Bring those do- the San Luis Obispo dogs back. <laughs> Get all your pets and there'll be a bit.ly and, and uh, I'll put it in the chat and you can all join and talk to your pets. And then on Friday, the last day of the Max Fun Drive, among all the other exciting things that are going to happen on Friday, check your local listings. Jordan Morris and I are going to be right here and I believe on the Max Fun HQ YouTube channel destroying our mouths with the hottest cheeses on earth. It's going to be hot cheese. I'm so excited. A special episode, Shooting the Breeze, Hot Cheese Edition. I'm literally going to warm up some of this cheese too. So it's going to be terrific. And I'm going to be doing it all. Never mind. That's too personal. Uh, It's going to be great. (laughs) (laughs) The Max Fun Drive continues. Thank you, Jennifer Marmer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nicole, a.k.a. Irony Maiden. Thank you, all the listeners. Jesse Thorne. Someone wanted to say, I mean, I this person put this in. Jeff Ellis had two questions. One, favorite thing about Hodgman, be specific. Two, what's my favorite thing about you? I mean, I don't know. I don't want to burst into tears right now. So do you want to talk about it later? Sure. All right. We'll talk about it later. Thanks for asking, Jeff. With but our I respective love, uh, therapists. Yeah, I love you, Jesse. I'll talk to you later, okay? Love you too, bud. Bye-bye.